to quote Nas, if I ruled the world. Well, I don't know every aspect of every part of the world, but I do know a lot of parts of the East Coast. And if I ruled the East Coast of the United States, what would I do with full power, with full control, with full reign? You may hear some autistic shit, some stuff that's really unrealistic to try and implement. But such is the nature of this. No, I'm not going to rule, likely, the entire East Coast of the United States. And because of that, I have a lot of creative reign. A lot of creative control in this kind of issue. So I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. This is the gayest thing I've ever worn. And you already know, when I wear fucking bitch clothing, that means it's going to be a blast of a video. And that's just what it's going to be. Now, the first issue I want to deal with, knowing me, is the Jewish question. And with the East Coast, it's very interesting since the Jews there tend to be a lot more conservative as opposed to the typical, I think, West Coast Jews. I think they're a lot more liberal. But I don't want to generalize because that's an unfair thing to do. They tend to vote GOP more, even though their views kind of align more with the left wing, because of Zionism, because they're interested in protecting their own wealth. A lot of places that they're present in are blue states as well, so I'm not going to rule out the other side. There are also conservative Democrats that are concerned about Israel as well. And places like Connecticut are a shithole. Places like Brooklyn, New York are hit or miss. Manhattan's hit or miss. Y'all know when when there's a hood, walk five blocks uptown and you'll find a juice spot that's really peaceful right near it. When there's a hood in Brooklyn, walk five blocks up, you'll see a nice peaceful little juice spot full of nice yuppie little hipsters yuppie hipsters uh, it, you can be yuppie, you can be hipster, and you can be both but uh, a lot of yuppie guys um, places like Connecticut are a shithole New Jersey also has the same kind of problem I mean that guy Ian Hartman also known as Death he was one of those dumbass anarcho-communist guys that switched to capitalists, but was always speaking about revolution and acting like a fucking non-individual anarchist. Well, that guy, uh, then he went back to his roots. That kid once said that there's more Jews in Jerusalem. I mean, there's more Jews in New Jersey than there are in Jerusalem. That was kind of his joke. Oh, it's just Jew Central. But it's a lot more affordable than Connecticut. You could drive up there and uh, get what you needed and come back. I mean, technically speaking, New Jersey is like right there for me. I'm literally looking out my window and seeing the view of New Jersey because, like, I'm on the last avenue before you're there. And the bridge is right, like right fucking there. It's I can just walk two blocks up and I'm there. So I know how shit works there. A lot of yuppie places and also a lot of places that aren't necessarily yuppie, but very blue state. I gotta deal with that since the conservative Jews are just as bad as the destructive ones, the ones that really just, the Tim Wise Jews, essentially. And 
Yeah, there's no just the Jewish questions, there's smaller Jewish questions. With that being said, you also have to deal with a lot of businesses that are censored around the East Coast. Most importantly, mainstream media. Mainstream media, MSNBCs and all the television channels, they gotta go. And they're all kind of in the city, so it's pretty easy to get rid of them shits. Store their, their asses out. Uh, um, replace that shit with some. You said you got you got to throw out the shitty businesses. You got to go Mussolini and throw out the degenerates. And then once you do that, things are gonna get a lot easier. The SUNY CUNY system that's throughout the state for universities and college. Those still have a lot of the old school Marxists, so it's important that they need to be removed of ASAP and replaced with something a lot more practical, useful, and non venomous in terms of education. Because the Marxists in the university system are essentially a dying philosophy, but they're still good at corrupting young minds. And then as for hoods like the Bronx and things like that, what you need to do is you need to get rid of the hardcore third worlders. The third worlders that are still very much in contact and going back and forth with their hometown. That's an easy way to get rid of the degenerate scumbags. I mean, you can keep them. I don't support 100% closed borders per se. Just keep the ones that third worlders that have been proselytized enough so that they don't have two hometowns. And that's how you get rid of 95% of the scumbags. For example, me. I don't consider DR a home of mine. I've never been to DR. The Dominican Republic just seems like a place that represents my parents nationality but not mine I mean I'm more likely to tell you I'm Dominican but that's because that's how you were raised to think you're not raised to call yourself an American here and that habit can easily be removed of. I mean I always tell people I was born here people kinda know that but Dominicans have the same way of looking at things. That uh, if there's a political, socioeconomic issue, their solution is always to go to PR, then go back to New York. For any problem, even if the world is going to end, their solution is always the same. Armageddon? Well, I'm going to go to DR and we go back to New York. And that makes up the majority of them. A lot of them are also good people. They're not criminals. They're not degenerates. Some of them aren't even hardcore liberals. But if you deal with the guys that have that kind of habit that, or haven't been proselytized well enough, or just cues like that, then you can get rid of a lot of the scumbags while also keeping people that are potentially useful. And going into other issues now, uh, the crime issue. Well, drug trade needs to be removed. Of. Some drugs do need to be institutionalized, just to put the black market and agorists out of fucking business. And I'm not talking about weed topia degenerate bill. I'm just saying that. Uh, it needs to be managed in a much better way. I mean, these scumbags, uh... It, it's almost a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, that's what essentially what it is. Because the guy on top is making all the money and everyone else is just... not making shit. And the business of drug dealing is very sick, and it shouldn't be dealt with with a bunch of crow mags breaking in their doors, 
and smashing their teeth in. It should be done the Mussolini way. Not the NYPD SWAT military training uh, D DEA way. Not that bullshit. I mean, there wouldn't be all these uh, criminals if there was a sort of Mussolini-type figure in the East Coast. I mean, he got rid of the Italian Mafia there, and they ended up here. A lot of, a lot of shitheads do leave when they see a symbol of true authority. So that's the problem, that there's not a symbol of true authority. There's no one to encompass that. Another thing is the energy issue, which I consider more important than the healthcare issue in some ways because it's spoken about a lot less. And this comes in with the road issue. Manhattan is very annoying to traverse because parking spaces are difficult to find. Insanely difficult. And occasionally you'll find traffic that makes a 30 minute bus ride become a three hour bus ride with a crazy Jamaican threatening to murder each and every one of you. I miss being 12. I mean, I hated the school I was in, but funny shit happened when I was 12, looking back at it. I was always depressed, but I was never suicidal. Going ahead, road downsizing. We need to bring back the old school downtown Manhattan. And this is where it gets autistic because I think that it'd be a great idea if we got rid of all the shitty capillary and artery roads that kind of ruin the architecture, ruin the vibe of New York, and prevent us from actually wanting to spend time in the streets. Times Square is, is starting to become a shopping mall. They're actually changing the architecture so it is an actual mall. As opposed to a place where people can just meet up and uh, talk. And you can actually see your friends from school or work or your family just walking through there. Just stopping by to talk and shit like that. A reunion place, a meet up place, a hangout spot. That's what it was. was. And it's not going to be like this if um, you got all this gray surrounding the place. And the streets are shit. It's not fun to explore. And all you really do want to do is go there to buy some shit and come back. I mean, that's what creates a Facebook generation. Shit architecture. Because... If, I guarantee you, if these places were fun to explore and walk around and go into other people's places, sit down, talk, hang out, I wouldn't want to go to Facebook except at night. You know, just for some little shit. Also, that would deal with the energy issue because then you don't have to use as much fossil fuels for the driving aspect and the road aspect and a lot of other stuff because you can downsize a little bit just a little bit and you can use thorium and other fossil fuels and this is where guys like many die come in to say to correct me on some things and give their two cents but that's more his line of expertise since he knows this shit I'm kind of a noob on all this And it also helps in that stuff like insurance, especially health insurance, which is an overrated issue, can be dealt with in a lot in an easier way. And maybe even maybe even the tax issue can be dealt with in an easier way. Because now you can have fraternal orders and brotherhoods which were the thing before health insurance or health care. Because people didn't have to worry about all that bullshit. Because 
they had each other and they could use each other as resources. And it was a lot more useful since there wasn't enough underhanded goy shit. And because of that, you didn't have to avoid... You, you could avoid all the douchebaggery we deal with now. I mean, half the issues of Obamacare wouldn't fly in a fraternal sort of brotherhood. Well, fraternal brotherhood, that's redundant. Where you could financially depend on each other. That wouldn't fly. Like, for, forcing you to get some shares or to have an insurance, otherwise you'll be taxed. That wouldn't happen. And it also make the services a lot cheaper. It's sort of the reason why the universities are getting more and more uh, expensive. It's sort of the reason why banks are given lower interest rate because we're all becoming good goys and we're becoming good sheep and dumbasses. So those are important e issues to deal with. You gotta have people socializing again, being friends again, for real. None of this absurd high school level association. That ain't cool. I mean, that's, it can't just be this ambiguous bullshit. It has to actually have a uh, all the semblances of a real relationship. And that's kind of what I would do if I ran the East Coast. I would become the East Coast Mussolini that would get rid of all those scumbags and stuff that make them all afraid. And I like using the word scumbag. But the last issue I want to deal with, and this is what I'll close it with, is the issue of the police because in NYC the stop and frisk program has been present since the 90s but it's only become excessive really now and what that's telling you is that the police are becoming more unintelligent more chromag and also they're reacting to more third world stupidity and chromaginess and as our IQs are getting the better of us, we're dealing with situations where not only are the police worth saying fuck you, but everyone else, more than ever. It's becoming a situation where you may not be the complete criminal, the complete shithead, but under this situation, you're kind of getting there. I mean, if you got rid of all this uh, bullshit environment, in terms of our demographic problems, in terms of our cultural problem, if you go for a Prussian model that gives the full citizen instead of the shitty civilian, instead of the consumer, instead of the student. You wouldn't need all these shitty chromag cops. In fact, for small towns, you can implement a neighborhood watch that isn't full of a bunch of yuppie liberals, yuppie liberals that uh, fuck shit up too. Anyway, this is my rambles. One of the longer Mr. Waka 7 videos. In fact, I've never had a video this long. Aside from that broadcast on... where no one actually asked me any questions. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm not going to say respect the king or suck my dick for this one, because... I've already tortured you enough. I just hope you guys enjoy yourselves. My little bro is still kidnapped. Apparently he went to his friend's house when he's not supposed to. Some friend we don't know. And now no one can contact him. 
And this would be a time where he comes home, so he's definitely kidnapped niggas. So I gotta save his ass like I promised I'd do it in the previous video. I'm gonna get my weapons. So anyway, this is Mr. Rocket 7, and y'all know I was bullshitting, suck my dick, respect the king, and 